The GameX GX 650W Gold is a power supply that is advertised as a great value for money unit, for both gamers and system builders. However, given the lack of track record for this power supply series and the competition within the under 90 US dollars price tag, will the GameX GX 650 be a good choice for a gaming system? We shall see in this review. GameX is a company mostly known around Asia and Latin America and now they are making an entry into the US and Europe. The GameX GX 650W Gold is part of the GX series of power supplies. It has no RGB and nothing flashy in terms of the design, which is a good thing to see. It means that what you pay for is for the inside and thus for the performance. The GX 650W is priced at around 88 US dollars. Which is not that good. For that kind of money, you can get an NZXT T Series C650, which is made by Seasonic. You know, Seasonic, the company that has a history of making power supplies that work for years? Yeah, those. So having the GameX priced close to this type of power supply is not that great. But let's move on and see if this power supply is worth the money or not. We start with the design, and here things are looking good. The power supply is black, obviously, with a grid insert on the specification label, and that's about it. Fortunately, no obstructions. RGB and no useless quote unquote cooling vents that go nowhere. The fan grill has a typical honeycomb pattern with a straight line in the center and corners. This design is not something we see every day, but it works, especially for a power supply that has GX in its name. The sides of the power supply are simple, both have a simple paper label, one with the GX green design and the other with the complete technical specifications of the power supply. Other here we have a classic power supply AC socket and the on and off switch, no fan control button or anything close to it, only those two and a standard honeycomb pattern acting as the main exhaust port for the airflow. The front part of the unit has the modular connectors and here we see something good, that is only present on some power supplies color-coded connectors. Well, just black and blue, but they are color-coded. And why is this important? Because it's easy to remember that the graphics card and CPU cables go into the blue connectors, even though in the case of this power supply, it's only the CPU cable that is color-coded for whatever reason. But credit where credit is due, all connectors are properly labeled, which is good to see. When we talk about the accessories, there's just enough to make it work and nothing more. You get a user manual, a power AC cable, 4 screws and 2 zip ties, and that's about it. The cables included with this power supply are good, almost all of them are flat ribbon style, which is great, as flat cables are easy to work with and you can overlap them with ease. Before we take the power supply apart, here's a quick advice that I have to include in every single power supply review I do. Do not, under any circumstances, open a power supply, especially one that has been used. The reason is simple. First, you will lose your warranty. Second, you might lose your life, dignity and soul in the process. A power supply that has been used might still have a lot of electricity still stored in its capacitors and other components. Thus, you messing with its internal components is a big no-no from a safety standpoint. Once the part of the casing is removed, we get to see the internal components of the power supply and things are quite odd. Starting with the fan, which has no label on it, so I have no idea who made it and what are the, its specifications. All we know is that it is a fluid dynamic bearing and that's about it. No idea about how fast it spins, no idea if it has a hybrid fan mode control or anything of the likes. The platform used by this power supply is made by the OEM Soho, which is not surprising and not that bad actually. We start with the main capacitor which is made by Tipo and has an operating temperature of 105 degrees Celsius. The filtering starts at the back of the power supply with three Y capacitors. In terms of the capacitors, we have a mix of APAC and Cheng X, which is not a good sight, especially on a power supply of this price. APAC I have seen before and while not the best, they do work for a good amount of time. The other capacitors though, I have my doubts. The APFC controller is a CM6050UNX made by Champion. This controller has been widely used in one way or another with many power supply, so it's great to see here. To give you an idea of how much this controller was used, this is the same controller used on some Seasonic Focus power supplies. It's also good to see that the key components of the power supply are passively cooled by a metal heatsink. This is the norm these days, but more cooling never hurt anyone. Testing a power supply was never easy, it requires complex and expensive equipment to do it, and 
to get an accurate result. However, that won't stop me, and I will be using my own testing system to see how good this power supply is. The testing system used for this review features an RTX 2070 Super graphics card and an Intel i9 9900K CPU, both running at its factory speed. This system will use no less than 450 watts of power at load, and it should be good enough for our review. We start with the efficiency, and in this case the GameX GX 650 watts gold reached a peak efficiency of 90%, which puts it in the 80 plus gold efficiency rating. This efficiency was reached with the power supply loaded with 450 watts or 69% of the total wattage of the power supply. For all power supply reviews, I am measuring the voltages using a digital multimeter that is connected to one of the cables of the power supply. I am doing this for all three voltage ranges, 3, 5 and 12 volts. This measurement is done to register the deviations of the voltages and looking back at the good efficiency of the power supply, you would think that it would do well with voltage oscillations, but you would be wrong. In the case of the GameMax 650 watts gold, things are looking average at best and now we see the consequences of using average at best capacitors and a questionable main capacitor. The voltage oscillations on the 3V and 5V rails is good, but the 12V rail is higher than what I would have liked to see, especially for this price point. In terms of actual noise, there isn't much to say. This power supply is silent even at a high load, although the fan quality is questionable because I have no idea what fan it is. At least it uses a standard tubing connector and thus it can be replaced with ease if it fails down the road. Looking at the results of the testing, what can I say about the GameMax 650 watts cold? Well, it's not a bad power supply, it is delivering the promised 80 plus gold efficiency but the ripple is not the best and the internal build quality, while good enough for your average gaming power supply, it is not comparable to Seasonic or Be Quiet power supplies. Unfortunately, I have to compare the GameX to with Seasonic and Be Quiet power supplies because the GameX costs the same amount as some of the units and that's the main issue of this power supply, the price. At close to 90 US dollars, the GameX GX650 is just too expensive for what it offers and let's not forget for a moment the questionable capacitors and the fan or the voltage ripple. Power supplies in this price segment often come with a higher warranty, especially the Seasonic models and even if it weren't for the extended warranty, you can rest assured that the build quality of a tried and tested power supply platform is miles better performance and reliability wise to what the GameX uses. While a good power supply for a mid-range gaming system, unless you can get it for 50 to 60 US dollars, I couldn't recommend you this power supply as there are so much better options available for the same price. If you can get it though for 60 US dollars and you have no alternative in this price range, then this power supply will work just fine. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the subscriber star pages of this channel.